Good morning, church. I welcome you on this third Sunday of Pentecost as we gather for scripture and for prayers, for sermon. I'm glad you have uh, joined me and hope you find this time uh, a time where you just grow in your spiritual faith. With today is also Father's Day, and so we are thankful for all the dads who are with us, and today is your day. And so we pray blessings upon you and thank you for the hard work that you you do to be those dads who love and care for us, are responsible for us. And that goes too for the people who act like dads to us, who are supportive and helpful. So today's your day. Enjoy. Uh, let's gather now around the Word, and I want to begin by reading to you our epistle lesson for this Sunday. It is from the sixth chapter of Romans. St. Paul writes, Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, <clears throat> so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is free from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. And here ends our reading. <clears throat> the gospel for this day, for this Sunday, is from the 10th chapter of Matthew, and it starts at the 24th verse. <clears throat> Jesus said to the disciples, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. 
And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I want to invite our children to gather around for just a few moments. Uh, I'd like to share some thoughts with them. And boys and girls, I want to talk to you today about hobbies. Do you know what a hobby is? A hobby is something that people, people love to do. It could be something like... Uh, taking photographs, or maybe reading, or knitting, or fishing, maybe going hiking in the, in the woods. Um, some people like to build model planes and cars, various things like that. I wonder, do you have a hobby? I wonder what it might be. Maybe one day soon you'll be able to tell me what your hobby is. I'd like to share with you what one of my hobbies is. I have brought a book, and as you can see, it's a book about birds. And I keep this book on our kitchen table or very close to our back porch because we like to look at the birds. And this book has all kinds of pictures of different kinds of birds. You know, God has created a lot of incredible birds. And I often wonder, the Bible does not say anything about God having a hobby, but I I have to wonder, after God created all these incredible, colorful, beautiful birds that are in this world, I wonder if God likes to look at birds. I can see him up in heaven looking and going, oh, there's a cardinal. Hey, there's a beautiful, magnificent eagle flying. Oh, a bluebird. And there are sparrows. You know, the Bible does talk about sparrows. Jesus mentioned them in our gospel lesson today. He said that two sparrows are sold for a penny, but not a single one ever falls to the ground, which means they died. They never fall to the ground unless the Father knows that death. You know, that's pretty amazing. Jesus was talking to his disciples one day, and he, he was talking them to them about being afraid or if they were worried when people maybe would threaten them because they were following Jesus and believed in him. And Jesus said, you needn't worry nor be afraid because you are far more valuable to our Heavenly Father than the sparrows. Just like he said, two sparrows are bought for one penny uh, but the Heavenly Father knows when they fall to the ground. And you are far more important than those sparrows. That's a wonderful thing for you and me to know, that we are more precious to God than even the birds of the air. Although they are precious to him as well. But God knows us, loves us, and says you don't ever need to be afraid. You never need to worry because you are more precious, more valuable to me than anything else. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you hold us so, so tightly in your hands of love and that we are more valuable, more precious to you than the birds of the air. Thank you. Help us to never be afraid. In Jesus' name, amen. And now I would ask you to join me in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart, may it be found acceptable in your sight. For it is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. In our gospel text for today, our Lord makes some rather harsh, um, almost scary statements. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter against her mother-in-law. Whoever loves father or more, more than me, is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me, is not worthy 
of me. Harsh statements. And I think we need to be honest here that if these words did not have Jesus's name on them, we would consider them to be some pretty ridiculous demands, uh, maybe demands of an evil person, or maybe even perhaps the, the leader of some crazy cult that's out there on the, on the fringe. And although we are not gathered in our sanctuary for worship, we are one in spirit today. Because in one way or another, we consider ourselves Christians, followers of Christ. And we have somewhere deep within us the desire to live a good life. And we believe that part of that effort to lead a good life is being the church and hearing the Bible read and sermons preached on what has been read. But now, today, we have to ask ourselves, okay, how how do all these words about wielding swords and, and family feuds, how are they supposed to help me be a better Christian? Seriously, what is the deal here? Perhaps by sharing a story, it may make uh, this a little clearer. A pastor, a pastor once had a counseling session and the young woman who had scheduled the appointment arrived just a little bit early, and so she was shown on into the pastor's office to wait while he was finishing up a meeting that was being held down the hall in another room. And as the pastor came into his office, the woman turned to him from the wall where she had been examining all of his diplomas um, on the wall. And she pointed at one of them, and she said to him, what, what is spiritual direction? And the pastor fumbled around for an answer for just a moment, and he finally explained it like this. People come in to see me, and I listen to them talk about their life, sort of like going to a counselor, but instead of whatever a, a therapist might say, a a spiritual director tries to help people find where God is in their life. And to this answer, the young woman replied, well, you know, that's, that seems a little funny to me. I, I should think, I should think it would be more important for them to figure out where they are in God's life. And the pastor later stated that he was very tempted to take his diploma down off of the wall in his office to give it to her with his name scratched out and her name written in. You know, everything changes when we turn the question around. Instead of our asking, what is God what is God doing to make life better, more whole, more spiritual and such? When in reality, the question is, what am I doing? What am I doing to involve myself in the work and the will of God in this world today? Seen in this light, the scary stuff that uh, Jesus says in our gospel text today can make perfect sense. This gospel text is lifted from a very long discourse that Jesus has with his disciples. Just before he, uh, what he's doing, he's getting them ready and he's, and he's sending them out on their very first sort of missionary trip to talk about the kingdom of God. And Jesus patiently yet persistently explains what this experience is going to be like for them. He's sort of helping them to, to be aware, to understand. It's going to be filled, Jesus says, with some tough moments. Yeah. Some moments where you may have some real, real fear for your life. And the realization that following him 
will bring many uncomfortable decisional moments. And as I said, uh, seen in this light, these scary words of Jesus, they make perfect sense. If you are going to follow Jesus, you have to be ready to walk the entire way. If you are going to go with Jesus, you have to be prepared to, to make a kingdom of God choice over your neighbors, your family, and most especially even over yourself. And it's not an easy choice to make. Indeed, both in both the gospel and in our second lesson today from, from Romans, this choice is one that deals with a death. Matthew states it like this, Those who lose their life for my sake will find it. And the Apostle Paul writes, We were baptized into his death, and our old self was crucified with him, and we have been united with him in a death like his. So yes, following Jesus. It is not so much about finding where God is in our life. It is all about finding those places where we have been called to be in God's life. What we are called to, to be about in this kingdom of God. What we are to be active and busy in. The hard, scary the crazy things that Jesus has said to us in this gospel text are still hard. But maybe, maybe not so crazy and scary after all. Uh, they are not crazy because they tell us a true reality about our own life. A reality that everybody needs to, to learn in order to be truly and completely human. The truth is, it's, it's not about you or me. That's the truth. It's not about you or me. It's not about us and how many people like us or think we're great. It is not about us and our wonderful families that we love so much. It is not about us. Not about us and our successful, uh, prosperous lives. It's just not about us. You see, the gospel message quickly brings a very sharp distinction here when you begin to examine it between what we think is the reality for the living of our lives in contrast to what the call of Jesus actually turns out to be. And paradoxically, the sooner one learns this, the happier that they will be. Now our ego, as strong as it may be, is probably, you know, when we're thinking about all this, crying out, well, if it's not about me, what is it all about? Honestly, it's about God. It is about God and God's deep love for this entire world, this whole creation. From the very hairs upon our head, to the life of sparrows, to the fate of the earth and the future of the human race, it is all about God and God's will and God's way and our place in that grand movement into God's promised tomorrow. We are called to be a part, a part of the new heaven and the new earth that God is actively creating in the here and now. And the things that Jesus says are not scary because they contain within them the promise of the resurrection. The promise that we will also be a part of this, this new life, this new thing that God is doing, that he's bringing to pass. 
Matthew states, those who lose their life will find it. And Romans reiterates to us that we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. That's a promise that will be kept. In today's gospel lesson, Jesus invites us to take up a cross and follow him. And that's not an easy action to take. And Jesus is not very specific about what that means. And he does not provide a contract. He gives no job description. Rather, he invites us to give up everything and simply follow him. And this invitation comes with the promise that we will never go it alone and that God's presence and God's power will be sufficient for all times. On that you can depend. And in reality, that's quite a good deal, don't you think? So I ask the question, or questions, how have you responded to that invitation? Have you taken up your cross? Have you accepted your place in the kingdom of God? Have you turned your back on all else, committing yourself completely to Christ? If not, why not? And if not now, when? Amen. I invite you now to join me in the prayers of the church. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. O gracious Lord, you have come into our lives and this world with a message of love and grace. But that is not all, for you now call us into action following you and sharing the gospel message with all people. Lord, your call is a call to action which will not always be easy nor comfortable. Give us your grace to take up our cross and follow you. Strengthen us to say no to self and yes to you, that we might find our lives in the process. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, we are a people who often shy away from or resist the challenge of spreading your word and your gifts of grace. Yet you remind us that your care for us is so great that even the number of hairs upon our, our head are known to you. Calm our fears and anxieties brought about through the concerns of living for you and help us to find our place of service in the kingdom that we may bring honor and glory to your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Expansive God, you bring diverse voices together to form your church. You open our hearts to learn from one another that differences might not overshadow the common good that may come forth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, the news of this world brings us messages of strife and war and violence and terrorism. And we would pray for healing words among all people and places where mistrust and anger and division reign. Send your spirit to bring much needed peace to our relationships and to this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protecting God, sustain and keep safe from harm's way all who work to defend others across this world. Revive and strengthen organizations that are dedicated to caring for refugees and for migrants while their homelands may be in struggle for peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, 
you are with us, and we are never alone. Bless all fathers and father figures who strive to love and nurture as you have done with us. And Lord, comfort all who long to be fathers, and all for whom this day can be difficult. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, you call us to be people of hope and trust. Be with those for whom we pray, especially with the ones who suffer with sickness and ill health. Comfort the needy and restore hope for the downcast. And trusting, trusting in the healing power that only you have, we lift the following to your care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now receive this blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.